cheese making has been with us for a very long time. We've been making it for thousands of years. It's always been popular because it's good to eat, and it's also a natural way to preserve all the goodness found in milk, the protein, the minerals, the vitamins, and the cream. In a way, cheese is really just solid milk, and it's just how milk becomes a piece of tasty cheese is what this video is all about. These days, cheese is mostly made in big factories, creameries, or more traditionally, on a much smaller scale on farms. Of course, there are all sorts of cheeses, but we're looking at how cheddar is made. It's one of the world's most popular cheeses, and lots of other countries also make it. Cheddar uses cow's milk, although cheese can be made from any mammal's milk, like sheep and goats. The basic cheese-making process is more or less the same, although there are some differences between how it's produced on farms and in creameries. For example, take the way a traditional farm cheese begins. For a start, they often use their own milk from their own cows, whereas at the creamery, everything's done on a much bigger scale, with lorries bringing in milk from as many as 500 different farms. Farm or factory, once the milk's arrived, it has to be heated or pasteurized to kill off any harmful bugs. The milk is coming in cold from the tank on one side of the pasteurizer. We're heating that up with steam on the other side of a stainless steel plate. And the 17 seconds that it takes for that milk to go through the tube is the length of time that the milk has to be held at that temperature to kill the bugs. The same thing happens in the creamery although everything's much bigger and there's a lot more milk to pasteurize. Not all cheese from factories or farms is made from pasteurized milk, although most is these days. A big creamery like this can make an awful lot of cheese, and without creameries we couldn't possibly produce enough to satisfy everyone who wants to eat cheese. The site here can take in up to 765,000 litres of milk per day, and from this we can produce 80 tonnes of cheese, and 40 tonnes of whey powder per day uh, with very few staff. They don't need the staff because there's so much machinery to do the work automatically. On the farm it's done on a much smaller scale and most of their traditional cheese making is done in these open vats or tanks. So the cheese makers can actually see what's happening. In the creamery it's done in closed containers and is fully automated. From this control room, just one man can run the whole process from start to finish. This is the heart of the cheese making process. The pasteurised milk is filled into these vats. We add the starter and the rennet. It turns it into curtain whey, which we then pack into cheese later in the process. So at the start of the cheese making process, the milk has to be encouraged to turn into solid cheese. It doesn't just happen. They have to add a starter, something to start the fresh milk turning into cheese. In both cases, they're using a similar starter culture of friendly bacteria to get the process going. This increases the acidity of the milk and speeds up the whole process. On the farm, this starter is a kind of yogurt which they pour into the warm pasteurized milk. In the creamery, the starter is made from a powder mixed with water, and this is then pumped into closed starter tanks. This is then added with the pasteurised milk into the cheese vat. You can see in the vats the uh, stirrers are turning round. Uh, the vat is filling up with 22,500 litres of milk. It doesn't take long for the milk to begin to turn, but to speed things up still further, they also add something called rennet to the milk. Traditionally, rennet came from animals, but nowadays it's usually vegetable or synthetic. It's the same on the farm and in the creamery. Milk curdles naturally after a time, like milk that's left for a long time in the fridge. This just makes it happen more quickly. Yeah, the difference is that the, this process is bigger and it's enclosed. But the actual process of what is happening inside the bath is exactly the same. Once the rennet has been mixed in, the milk sets or curdles very quickly into a kind of thick yogurt-like junket, the curd. At this stage, the milk can be warmed to different temperatures, depending on what kind of cheese we're making. This is where the famous curds and whey begin to form. 
In the old days, curds and whey, as well as cheese, were often eaten by country people. At this stage, the curd is ready to be cut up into small pieces. The whey is the milky liquid left behind. So what's happened here is that we've, we've cut the curd for the first time, and it's something now that's like a milk jelly, and re but really, really soft at the moment. And as, as the milk, milk curds and whey, which is what it is now, gets more acid, that, that those curds will get harder and harder. At the moment, they're really breaky and soft. The same thing's happening in our creamery, but you can't see it so easily. Inside these huge containers are sensors which trigger different stages in the production. On the farm, they can see and feel when the curds and whey are ready to be switched to the cooling vats where they'll be separated. We bring the curd down into the coolers down here and we drain the whey off. As much of the whey as possible is drained away for hard cheeses like cheddar. This whey isn't wasted. The small amount of cream that's left in the whey is turned into butter or left as cream. What remains is fed to animals at the farm. The creamery has much larger volumes of whey, which is dried into a powder and sold to food manufacturers as an ingredient. When the whey is drained off, we cut it with a knife and then Turn, turn the bits of curd, and that's a process called cheddaring. Now, there's loads of cheddar cheese made in the world, but not very many do the cheddaring in the old-fashioned handmade way, hand-turning the blocks of curd. The blocks of curd are turned three or four times, and all the time it changes texture. Once we've drained off the whey, the curd turns into these large slabs, which will eventually become our cheese. In a big creamery, cheddaring is done in a machine called the cheddar tower. At the bottom, the curds have been pressed together and are cut into chip-sized pieces through a cheddar mill. On the farm, the curd is getting harder and more solid every minute, and when the time is right, it's put into a mill so that it can be chopped up into pieces the size of a thumbnail. It's all done by hand here, something which just isn't possible in a big creamery where they produce much larger amounts of cheese. In this factory, we're actually making five tons of cheese every hour, and we're often making cheese for 16 hours a day. So we need a, a very large number of people to do it by hand, and this machine takes the hard work out of the job. If you were to eat them, the curds will now taste very milky, not like cheese at all. This is when they usually add salt to help preserve the cheese and to add flavor. What's happened here is that the curd has been cut into small strips, what we call chips, because they look quite like a chip. And we then add in salt. It helps preserve the cheese. It also means it gets the right flavour at the end of the day. Traditional cheesemakers put the chopped and salted curd into moulds ready for pressing into the kind of barrel shape we often think a finished cheese looks like. This also squeezes out more of the whey. Farm-made cheeses tend to be pressed into these round truckles or barrels. In our creamery, it's more of a production line with the curd already shaped into blocks ready to be sealed into plastic bags. Right, well, we've taken the salted curd from the cheeses and pressed this into 20 kilo blocks, which are then packed into a plastic bag. The plastic bag keeps the mold out of the cheese and it still matures within the plastic bag to give the same taste as on the farm at the end of the day. But first they have to be stored away in a cool dark room to mature where the temperature and humidity is carefully controlled. In the creamery they're already in their boxes. The farmhouse cheese has to be regularly turned by hand. The humidity, the amount of water in the air, is carefully controlled and from time to time the cheesemakers in both the creamery and on the farm check the cheeses as they ripen for colour, taste and smell. How long they're stored depends on how strong or tasty we want our cheese to be. The longer they're kept, the tastier they will be. After they come out of the cheese dairy, we keep the cheese in store for six months for mild cheese about 12 months for mature cheese and maybe up to 18 months for extra mature cheese. Well, good cheese to me.
and because they're rinded cheese, they sit on these wood these racks here. They need to be turned, and uh, they just sit here and mature. And this uh, discoloration that you get here is all the molds and uh, and everything growing on the growing on the rind and helping to form the rind. And it's the fact there's a rind on it which makes the traditional cheese different from creamery cheese. When the cheese is ready for the shop, they strip off the outer covering and throw it away. Creamery cheese has always been in plastic, although this doesn't make any difference to the quality of the cheese. It's just a different way of doing it. They say the flavours from farm cheese often taste more complex than the cheese from creameries. It just depends on what you like. But farm cheesemakers can't hope to make enough cheese to feed all the cheese-eating people in Britain, and that's where the big creamery cheesemakers come in. The farmhouse cheese caters for a particularly premium end of the market. We cater for the mass market, producing a cheese of good quality for, for all types of people. No matter how the cheese is made, whether on the farm or in the dairy, it can still fit well into a healthy, balanced diet. Cheeses like cheddar provide a number of nutrients which are important for good health, such as calcium. Young people, and also young adults, need calcium for building strong, healthy bones. In fact, adequate calcium intake is essential throughout adult life too. Calcium is also important for healthy teeth and small cubes of hard cheese can make a useful tooth-friendly snack. Hard cheeses are also a good source of protein, which we need to help us grow, and they provide vitamin B12, which has a number of roles, helping our immune system and nerves function and playing a part in red blood cell production. On top of all this, cheese is also very good to eat. It's a tasty snack, as well as part of the main meal.